typically we don't see root canal infection becoming so systemic. It's really when we don't take care of our periodontal health. So mm. our gum and our bones, and we're not flossing and we're not brushing and we're, we don't have that good oral hygiene. And we start to develop periodontal disease. Periodontal disease is what's been linked to things like cardiovascular disease. So if you really wanna take care of your heart, you wanna make sure that your mouth is is in a, a place of homeostasis, right? So you're you're actually breaking up the bacterial colonies every day. And it's really simple to do that with just brushing and flossing. It's probably the most economical way to stay out of my chair is doing simple modes of prevention. And um, and yeah, if you have good daily habits, you know, I, I know a lot of people like to cold plunge and they they meditate every day and if you just add this five minute flossing hack into your daily life you will have better cardiovascular health too and better breath <laughs>everybody welcome back you're listening to the ancient health podcast and i have a really amazing guest today we just connected on the fact that we're both from well i'm from charlotte she's in charlotte north carolina but i am so excited i love having people that are specialist in their space and she has one area that she is an expert on so i am so thrilled that dr sonia chopra has agreed to be with us today she's not like any ordinary dentist so we're going to get into the specialty that kind of her field, her niche space that she's in, but she believes that the mouth is the gateway to the body. And she also believes, just like we talk about on so many episodes, that everybody can become their own healer. And so we're going to talk about what that looks like in when it comes to your oral health. Um, so Dr. Sonia Chopra, thank you so much for being here with us, for sharing your knowledge and experience in this space. We're going to talk about root canals. We're going to talk about advocating for your health. So many different things, but your work is everywhere. You're teaching other docs, you're teaching people. So I love the the work in the space that you're in. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. So great. So first of all, you're an endodontist. So I yep. would love for you to share what that is specifically. Most people are thinking probably it, in the world of dentistry. I mean, maybe this is just me, but I'm I'm like, okay, orthodontist, dentist, you may be a biological dentist. Maybe somebody's heard that term, but endodontist. So what is this What is this field specifically that you are an expert at? So endodontists are tooth savers. We prefer to save your tooth when it becomes diseased as opposed to extract. So we basically treat the inside part of the tooth, aka endo, and um, we specialize in root canals. Everyone's favorite. <laughs> yes. And it's interesting because there's, I have heard some mixed reviews about root canals. You'll hear some people say, oh, you know, if anybody says you need a root, they don't do them. So I, we'll just come out of the gate strong because I would love to address that. Because yeah. even in the natural health community, you'll hear some people say like root canals are the worst, you know? So bring us up to speed. Give me your take kind of on how people end up in a position where maybe a root canal may be their only option or or an option they're looking at and really maybe debunking like some of the fear around it. Yeah, so root canals are, are scary for some people because of maybe a friend or a family member has had a bad story about one or maybe somebody have read something, you know, not so positive online. Um, because people do report their experiences and they have a tendency to report their negative experiences over their positive experiences. Um, I will say that there is some reason for people to be concerned because 50% of what I do in my practice is redoing a lot of root canals that weren't really up to par. And there are a few rules that you must follow when you do a root canal. And that's one, you have to find every canal in the tooth. And number two, you have to get to the very end of every canal. And when you do that, you can actually have a root canal that is very healing. It's very regenerative. It can actually even grow your own natural bone back if you've lost that bone. So not only can you save your tooth, but you can also regenerate your own bone if it's done 
to a proper protocol. And I will say that nowadays in 2023, root canals are done so differently now than they were even 15 years ago when I started my practice. So the evolution that we've seen in technology has really made a difference. And um, I always say there's no better time to get a root canal than now. Yeah, I'm curious, are, are root canals different? You know, and you're doing a lot of revisions, you say. So why is it that they're not being done right? Is it that, that like, we don't, you know, people are just, the, the dentists that are doing them are not trained how to do it appropriately? Or well, it, they're, like, they're doing the best that they can with the resources that they were given. So when we graduate dental school, even when I graduated dental school, I only had to perform four root canals to graduate. And now you only have to perform sometimes in some schools, not all schools, four canals to graduate. And sometimes you can have four canals in one tooth. So imagine if somebody who was delivering babies only delivered one or two and then graduated, you really wouldn't want to have them deliver your baby. So medicine is very different. We go through, you go through medical school and then you pick a specialty and then you go to four to six additional years where in dentistry, you do four years of dental school and then you're allowed to basically do whatever procedure you want. And, or you can choose to become a specialist, which I chose to do. And I did another two years and sometimes it's even three. I did two years of additional training to become an endodontist. And that's all I do. And now for the last 15 years, that's all I do eight to 10 times a day. So unfortunately, the education isn't where it could be, you know, yeah. when it comes to understanding endodontics and, and that that's a problem. And when you graduate, you're kind of expected to do it because there's a lot of root canals that need to be done in the world. And actually 80% of root canals are done by general dentists and not specialists. Only 20% are done by the specialist. And so I think that's why it's really important to be your own patient advocate and make sure you you ask the right questions and you know that you have a choice to see a specialist if you choose to. Now that I'm also gonna say that there are some general dentists who are very good at doing root canals and they should do them because we need them. We need them as part of our army to, to handle all these teeth. But um, I think sometimes people want their dentists to do more than they're comfortable doing. They, they want their dentist to be a one-stop shop. And sometimes that's not in the best interest of the patient. And sometimes our denti the dentist feels like they're kind of forced into doing something that they really weren't comfortable in doing. So I think it's a mix of that and also a mix of we just need a little bit more education around the topic because it is a very technique-sensitive um, procedure. And you could be a millimeter off and it will make or break your case. Wow. Wow, that's fascinating. Is do you feel like as a professional that you're seeing more root canals or like what do you what do you feel like is contributing to poor oral health right now that is maybe resulting in cases of root canals or maybe an increase? I mean, are you do you see that? I'm always interested at looking at the trends or, or at, at getting perspective from somebody, you know, that's been doing this for 15 years like you said. Yeah. So, I mean, there's definitely no shortage of needing to do a root canal there then, and the need to do it quickly because the toothache can be really, really mean. But, you know, we see a change in our diet just with the industrialization of our diet, right? Processed foods, increased sugars in our food, break down our teeth, and that gives an avenue for bacteria to get into the tooth plus stress, right? Stress will cause us to clench and grind and will create these micro cracks in our teeth, which become doorways for the bacteria to get in to infect the nerve. And then there's also trauma. So I would say decay, stress leading to cracks and also trauma. Trauma is probably the least, but those three things are the primary ways bacteria gets into the tooth to create an infection where you would need to have a root canal. Okay. Okay. And I, I want to touch on the regenerative part that you mentioned earlier, because I've never, I've, I don't know that I've ever considered or heard of, of a doctor, a dentist, endodontist talk about regenerative teeth. Like that's just like a, 
I mean, you can, I've heard of like healing cavities and things like that, but even that, like a lot of times if you just ask your average dentist. I know in my experience, they're like, well, we just need to take care of this. Like, there's no way this is ever getting better. And so you kind of like get conditioned to believing that teeth only decay and decline. Like you, they only are like, they're as good as they are right now. That's the best it's ever going to get. And you can sometimes stop the progression of deterioration, but you're likely not going to reverse anything or heal. So regenerative, talk about regeneration or regenerative bones when it comes to our teeth. Right. So when I'm talking about regeneration, I'm not talking about the teeth itself, but the bone that encapsulates that tooth, the bone that's around that tooth in the socket. So what happens when we have bacteria that gets introduced to our teeth and it sits there long enough, the body mounts an immune response. And the immune response triggers like a cascade of events in and around the tooth. And the body, the bone starts to pull away from the tooth. Okay. So there's, it just kind of is like, Hey, I don't, I don't really like a dirty friend, right? It wants to pull away from the tooth. And what happens when you look at an x-ray, that looks like a shadow around the tip of the root on, on the x-ray. It looks like a dark black shadow. And so that's when we can tell as a dentist that a nerve has died in the tooth. Mm. And sometimes that shadow can get huge. And sometimes that can scare dentists, right? I could show you case after case where my patients have like a huge crater in their jaw. Essentially, that's what it is. But that's an immune reaction. That's the body just saying, hey, I'm going to pull away. And it actually encapsulates that infection because the body doesn't want it to spread anywhere else. So it's encapsulating the bacteria in this space. Once you do a root canal and you disinfect the tooth and you actually remove that etiology, which is the bacteria, now the body can reverse that immune reaction. And now the body sends signals to the area to say, hey, osteoclast, go ahead and start, or osteoblast actually, go ahead and start laying down more bone. And then the bone comes back. And that's how you know your root canal has worked because you follow it up for a year. And one year later, we see that bone fully fill back in and regenerating, which is really kind of neat. I always say that's our superpower as humans. And it's important that you have a dentist who believes that that dark shadow is reversible. There are some people who don't believe that it's savable. And so they take the teeth out. So I think as a patient, if you are told that you need to get a tooth out because you have this big infection and you don't feel right about it, definitely get a second opinion. Because yeah. there are some teeth that people have said goodbye to it. And then the patient has found me and I do the treatment and, and that, that tooth survives. Yeah. I wish I could show you an x-ray of before and after. <laughs> that would be really cool. I know we'll have, maybe we'll, maybe we'll coordinate something. You could send that we, we could post about it. Cause that okay. would be really interesting. I think that I'm always interested to know too, like when I'm, being seen and like, you know, they're getting the images and I'm always in my mind, like trying to look at it like, oh, I wonder, you know, I have no idea what I'm really looking at, but I'm right. always in my mind trying to assess yeah. like how yeah. bad it is before they say anything. So it, it, it's, it is funny that, that you even say that there are doctors that are, they're really prejudiced against thinking that, you know, there's really a chance like it's okay. Well, yeah. we know that if this is how, if this is the evidence of the health of the tooth, that this is really not going to recover in any way, I would be interested to ask or, or to know then, you know, what the impact is because we're talking about infection and bacteria. And we've had conversations that I've talked to Dr. Motley about this, about how, you know, the mouth in and of itself is so important. Like that so much disease can stem from the mouth and then be systemic, meaning it can show up and be carried to other parts of the body. So whatever the health of the mouth is, isn't just on an island by itself. It's connected to other organ systems and tissues. And those, the health of those organelles and tissues are strongly affected by your oral health. So if the root canal is not done properly, or if there's bacteria that's there, What's the connection to the health of the rest of the body and what other organs are most affected that you've seen? Yeah, so typically we don't see root canal infection becoming so systemic. It's really when we don't take care of our periodontal health, 
So mm. our gum and our bones, and we're not flossing and we're not brushing and we're, we don't have that good oral hygiene. And we start to develop periodontal disease. Periodontal disease is what's been linked to things like cardiovascular disease. So if you really want to take care of your heart, you want to make sure that your mouth is is in a, a place of homeostasis, right? So you're you're actually breaking up the bacterial colonies every day. And it's really simple to do that with just brushing and flossing. It's probably the most economical way to stay out of my chair is doing simple modes of prevention. And um, and yeah, if you have good daily habits, you know, I, I know a lot of people like to cold plunge and they they meditate every day. And if you just add this five minute flossing hack into your daily life, you will have better cardiovascular health too and better breath. <laughs> <laughs> so when they're telling us to floss our teeth, guys, we we actually do have to floss our teeth. I've, I, I have been really good, I will say, about... It is funny, like when you develop a habit, it just doesn't feel right. Like you don't feel like your ritual is complete until you've done all the things. So you just have to like get yourself do flossing because otherwise you'll be like, I haven't flossed. Like this does not feel right. You know? So you can definitely tell a difference. I want to ask you this because I'm personally interested in knowing, you know, I, I have seen a lot of people with uh, gut infections and bacterial overgrowth and things like that. And, and so, you know, and we, and a lot of times part of that is due to biofilms and plaque. Is there anything that you notice that helps that people could use? I, there's, you know, a lot of different herbals and things like that, that are formulated like toothpaste that you can use to help bust up some of those biofilms. But some people don't realize that a lot of the plaque, you know, those are, that's essentially what like a biofilm is and they can harbor all kinds of bacteria. So is there anything that you see that helps on the preventative side? Like say you feel like, Hey, I'm kind of having recurring oral problems. My gums are like sensitive. And I don't know, like kind of the characteristics of, you know, feeling like, you know, based off of some symptomatology. Well, I mean, again, just, just keeping with simple methods, I think is, is key. I know there's, there's actually a study of, you know, showing that certain demographics of people actually only brush their teeth once a day and I will, or, and sometimes even miss that and they'll do it every 48 hours. As soon as you're done brushing your teeth, the bacteria start to recolonize. So what brushing your teeth does is it breaks up the mechanical, it, it breaks up mechanically the colonies of the bacteria. Okay. And as if you leave it there, if you leave those colonies undisrupted, that's when they create those layers that create the biofilm that you're talking about. So it's really important to continuously break up the layers. And within one minute of stopping brushing or flossing, that recolonization starts to happen all over again. So you can see how you could your oral microbiome can quickly get out of whack. And then if this is your first place of digestion, it's going to just impact the rest of your body. So really being diligent about brushing your teeth in the morning and also very importantly at night, because that's when most of the parties in your mouth happen. So because our pH in our mouth drops and our saliva production drops at night. So we really want to make sure we clean everything at night and know that the toothbrush only hits certain areas. And you know, when you're flossing, it makes that click sound. Yeah. that That's the contact point. And that's where the two teeth touch. And that's the part that the toothbrush can't get. So that's the part that your floss needs to really get because you may look in your mouth and say, I don't have any decay, but that's why we need to take radiographs because that contact point is where decay loves to start. And that's where we can't see with our, our naked eye. We actually need some imaging to see if there's anything happening. And the bacteria are really smart. They don't want to be found out. So they're going to do their job painlessly. So a lot of people assume that they don't have any pain, so they don't have a problem. And therefore, I don't need to go to the dentist. And they avoid us. And then the problems get worse. But if you brush twice a day, if you floss once a day, again, those two things happening right before bed, really important. And if you clean your tongue, if you scrape your tongue, I think that's what's going to keep your body, your, your mouth in a good homeostatic environment. Um, you want to avoid things like mouthwash because 
that's actually going to disrupt the oral microbiome a little bit too much because you do need the protective side of the bacteria as well. You don't want to totally eradicate them because they are helping you with digestion and they are protecting you in, in certain ways. So I think don't overly do it, but definitely don't underdo it. Yeah. I love that you brought up the mouthwash. It's it don't, don't do the, don't do the toxic mouthwash. (laughs) So, and the tongue scraping, I love tongue scraping guys. You can get a tongue scraper on Amazon and it's like very inexpensive. And that is the first thing. So that, is that the first thing you do in the morning? Like tongue scrape? I would say it's step two. I usually brush first and then I tongue scrape. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. You're a brusher yeah. then. It's okay. Yeah. I've never done it that way. Yeah. I've always just gone straight to the tongue scraper and then brush and everything. But um, yeah, it is interesting. What, what, what is it? Is there, are there any warning signs? Like if you're scraping your tongue and you see like, are there any characteristics of like, what's actually coming off of your tongue that you would be like, Oh, there's probably something going on there. Like, is there, are there, I've always wondered, like, should I be looking for anything? Cause it's just kind of like a, you know, a a thin coating on my tongue. This is like a very obscure question, but I'm asking if you have an overly white tongue, you could have some form of fungal infection, but I think that's easy to get like scared from too. I don't think you would really know unless you cultured it. Um, so I would, I don't like to make people terrified. I, I just say, Hey, keep yeah. doing the practice. And if you're really concerned, you know, maybe you can sample it. Um, but more often than not, it's just, it's stuff that, you know, lactobacillus or streptococcus mutans. Those are the things that naturally live in our mouths. And that's probably what it is. Okay. I just have always wondered that I thought I do that as a practice and I, and so, and I know the benefits of doing it, but I've also not really thought about, is there something I should be looking for that would indicate maybe there's a deeper problem there. So, so thank you for, for, you know, putting my fears to rest there. Okay. I want to shift gears a little bit. You talk about being a quantum healer in the mouth and, and mouth space, teeth space. What is, what explain that? Because for some people, maybe they've heard of quantum energy, but you know, that may be a totally foreign concept or idea. I mean, it's quite simple, actually. I do believe that, you know, we, we need to believe that there are powers that exist within us that allow our bodies to heal naturally. I think there's a big group of people that are out there that are trying to biohack. And, but I like to talk about the idea of bioflow. Now, granted, you know, when you do have an infection, you still need to do the, the therapy first, but then once the therapy is done and when it's done adequately, then you need to trust and believe that it's going to work. And when you believe it's going to work and it really does. And that's where I see that, you know, if you just allow your body to be in the flow that it's required, that it's, that it's, that it always is, then you'll see the magic that the body truly has. And you don't have to go, you know, I I have a lot of patients who say, oh, do I need to take calcium to grow that bone back? I'm like, no, you just need to, to be you and just, and be present. And that's it because your body's going to do what it was meant to do. So yeah. I just ask people to really trust that. That's a great, that is a, it is true though. We see placebo, like that is a real thing where it's like, if you actually believe your body has healing capacity, your body, your brain will tell your body like to communicate that message. People stay sick all the time and half of the battle or even more of the battle is the fact that they just believe they could never feel any better. So right they're going to they're going to live with these perpetual symptoms because in their mind they're just thinking this is this is as good as it gets i've always felt this way so i don't know why i would believe that any therapy or supplement or any you know procedure is going to make it different because i've just always felt bad so you really do have to change mindset and we have a, a number of podcasts around that and emotions and things like that and how it plays such a role in healing so and i i love that the that belief system with the the healing process with bone specifically and, and the teeth, 
I feel like that is kind of a vital sign of like, hey, the body's responding favorably. So it's likely carrying that out in other areas of the body as well. When you see that somebody maybe doesn't have that response, are there other things or practices or questions that you ask those patients? When you do that follow-up, say that the patient's not not healing favorably. You know, what is it that then as a as a practitioner goes through your mind to think maybe we need to address, you know, X, Y, and Z? Yeah. So I'm always going to have a small percentage of of people who don't heal from from what I do, right? And they probably need additional therapy. There's something in the way that's not allowing that tooth to heal. And sometimes it's mental and sometimes it's physical. But um usually they just need like a second procedure. But again, what I'm trying to say really is that there is already this built-in innate healing capacity of our bodies. And that's the piece that we have to trust. If you believe root canals are toxic, they're toxic, right? From a patient standpoint, if you're the dentist and you believe that that bone can't heal, then it definitely can't heal. But what I've learned through actually giving teeth a chance, uh, you know, I've had patients who are like, I really want to save this too. And I was like, I'm not really sure if this one's a good one to try to go that extra mile. But I'm so grateful for those patients that actually said, no, I want you to try. I understand the time, the energy, and the investment to go into this. I want you to try. And having had so many of those patients and I've tried and I've actually seen that it works, that's what's really made me a believer. And so now I've kind of created this reputation that if anyone can save it, it's it's Dr. Chopra. And that's why I feel why I, I ask people to really believe and trust of what their bodies can do for them. Yeah. I imagine you get a lot of people and you kind of alluded to this earlier, but you get a lot of people that have been to a number of other uh, dentists and doctors and, you know, they've, they've had, you know, not one, probably multiple failures, or they're just, they, they feel like the tooth isn't healing. They're not resolving their problems. And so you're getting people that are learning that they have to start to advocate for themselves. They have to, they're going to have to go find, uh, you know, if there's a will, there's a way, because it's just, you know, when, when you, we start relying on the system or, or, you know, just the doctors that you're used to going to, and you're still not getting answers, you kind of feel like, well, nobody else is really, I can seem to figure this out. I'm going to have to do some extra legwork here. What is it? Do you have like a patient or a story that, um, you know, where maybe somebody has come to you that has been kind of through the ringer and then, and, and really felt like, Hey, this is a, Hail Mary. I don't even know, but you know, where you really saw like complete turnaround based on, you know, the root canal that you were able to do for them. Yeah, I've had several. And a lot of people think that they have like sinus issues or they have terrible headaches. And then they find me as that Hail Mary. And I actually find that it's a tooth problem. And once you treat the tooth and you remove that etiology, which is that bacteria, and you you get that tooth nicely disinfected, all of a sudden their symptoms go away. I can actually show you that maybe that's the case that I send you of how the sinus had regressed after the root canal because it was fully inflamed. And I did the root canal and the sinus regressed completely. And that's, that's what I mean by root canals are regenerative. And I have to fight the big old fight because there's so many people that think that they're toxic and you can't get all the bacteria out. And it's not about getting all the bacteria out. It's about getting it to a, a lower bacterial load that the immune system can then take care of the rest. Like, how do we get better from a common cold? Your immune system, you didn't take any meds to get rid of it. Your immune system took care of it. So I think that's, again, part of the quantum that we need to understand and remember. Um, and that's the piece that I feel like I'm here to remind people of. So this this poor lady, this, uh, this man, actually, I've had one lady who had um, sinus surgery. They actually did surgery on her. And then she came to me and she's like, I, I kind of feel like it's a tooth, but I also feel like it's sinus because you can have a lot of referred pain in the area. And as soon as I did that root canal, 
she felt better. And then on the gentleman, his whole sinus, you can see in the imaging, completely regressed to its normal position. Wow. That is pretty wild. I mean, because think about it. If if you had a sinus problem, you're likely going to see another specialist just for the sinuses and they're only treating that. And so it's like, okay, well, I'm trying to treat the sinuses and maybe you don't even suspect that the tooth is the the real root cause issue. That's so interesting. And you wonder, it makes me think like what other areas are improving because now your body's not having to spend so much energetic effort on one thing. And you brought up a really good point where it wasn't about completely eradicating the infection or the bacteria. It's just about getting it to a point where the body's regulatory systems can step in and control it. And that's really that is so important, I think, to point out because we we oftentimes think like viruses, bacteria, all of these things. It's like just, you know, the whole germ theory, like we just got to get rid of, we got to wipe it out, we got to sanitize it all. And it's like, we don't need to intervene to the point where we're disrupting at biology and the natural design of our bodies. The problem becomes when the immune system is so overtaxed trying to handle all these different threats. So maybe you've got a little bit of a tooth issue and maybe you've got some gut stuff. Maybe they're correlated, but again, it's this compounding effect. And then you've got toxins everywhere. Maybe you're you know, using a lot of products that ha- carry toxicity. And so your immune system is just getting beat up day in and day out. And it just can't control the infection that's there. So like you said, bringing, it, bringing that load down, all of a sudden now the natural defense systems of your body can do their job and control it. All of us carry viruses too. Like if you've had strep or st- anything, that stuff, once you've had it, it's just now controlled by your immune system. It's still there. And so a lot of times people will think like, oh, I never thought that that's what it is. But it's when they've got too many stressors in their life and those viruses become out of control because they've been there and they've been dormant. The immune systems brain them in, but the immune system maybe now has something, a big fire to put out somewhere else. And so that's when the wheels feel like they're coming off and nobody probably thinks, Hey, let's check my teeth to make sure everything is good. Unless there's pain. Yeah. And our bodies are so smart. They're meant to protect us and they give us signs and and signals. And that's why a lot of people actually sometimes will ignore their signs and, and signals that the body's giving to them. So they're like, Oh, I had some pain and then it went away. And just never came back. So I let it go. So remember those things. When it comes to teeth, you can have cold sensitivity, you can have heat sensitivity and biting sensitivity. Those are, or even some swelling, or you can get a pimple on the gum. And those are some of the signs that your body's telling you that there's something up. Yeah, absolutely. Are there practices that you recommend to your patients? Maybe post root canal that you feel like, you know, are maybe not, um, common. I don't know whether it's like herbals or things that would support the body. Like, or I'm just thinking if somebody's having a procedure, anything in their mouth, are there, are there practices or, or are there any type of supplement even that would help, help the body, the oral cavity even heal a little bit better in a more natural way rather than maybe taking a more conventional route or maybe you get antibiotics or something like that? Well, I try not to give antibiotics whenever I can. And that's never my go-to because again, I think the body does such a good job and it's very easy to give antibiotics to treat pain. But if you have a little extra inflammation, which is what will happen naturally because the first part of wound healing after any procedure or after, you know, any injury, your body's trying to get the cells into that area to start like healing that wound. And that rush of cells is pretty much called inflammation, right? And so you, you want to take an anti-inflammatory or if you are opposed to taking Advil or something like that, then you could maybe take some turmeric that's a little bit more natural. I will say I um, recently put a laser in my practice, so I like to do some photomodulation of the area, as a, and, and that really helps expedite my patients to get better. But other than Advil or Tylenol, that's the only thing my patients will ever get. Um, and again, if, they're, if they love to be supported by some herbs, I think turmeric's probably the best bet. Yeah. When you say photobiomodulation, are you talking about red light? 
like red light um, it's, therapy? It's it's just a laser. It's a an actual laser. It's okay. A, okay. An erbium laser. Yeah. I imagine. Have you ever used red light? I now that I'm thinking about that, I wonder if red light therapy would be. I haven't. Not in my dental practice. I do at home. <laughs> but not yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I have a a red light too, and I yeah. But I'll use. It, I'll just kind of like spot use it um, from time to time in different places. But um, that is so interesting. So, what is it that you would say for the the listener that you know we all have our oral hygiene, dental routine, and and probably I would imagine a large number of people maybe have had a root canal or have had a spouse or somebody that has been faced with the decision of doing a root canal, or maybe they've already had a poor experience. You know, what are some questions from the, just like the, the average person side that it's like, okay, what could I be improving? What should I be looking for? Cause I think it's just, we're just not educated on a lot of things until there's a problem. And then all of a sudden there's the pain factor. And so people feel like I don't have time to try and figure this out. Like I need a solution right now because I have a lot of pain in my mouth um, and it's disrupting my life. So what are some things that you would suggest to people to make sure that they feel confident with what they're doing? Because you, you know, you can't, So there are plenty of things that I've done and I'm like, man, I can't go back and change that. I wish I had, but you know, once you commit to a, a certain procedure operation, it's like it's, you know, it's yeah. done. I think step one is awareness, knowing that a whole specialty that's dedicated to root canals exists is step one. So that's part of the reason I love talking about this because a lot of people are like, you're an endocrinologist. I'm like, no, I'm an endodontist. So step one is awareness, knowing that there are specialists in this field. And I think you have to ask yourself as the patient, what's important to you? Do you want to go straight to the specialist or are you comfortable working with your general dentist doing this procedure? Um, And then once you pick your provider, make sure they have the right pieces of tech. Root canals have come a long, long way over the last 15 years, especially. So I use a microscope. So not just those little glasses that put on my head. I actually have this giant contraption that comes out of the wall and it's a full on dental operating microscope. Um, In my experience, there are so many canals that I would never have been able to find without that gigundo piece of equipment. And I use that microscope throughout the entire procedure. The other thing that has been super valuable is 3D imaging, and that allows us to diagnose better and faster. It allows me to really appreciate the anatomy of the tooth before I even get inside the tooth. So now I can tell you, do you have one canal, two, three, four, five? I've even found six in a tooth before. So really understanding the anatomy because we have imaging that allows us to see more than two dimensional traditional x-rays. And then third is having a technology that allows you to get in those hard to reach places that everyone complains about that the root canal can't get to. So nowadays there's technology like lasers, which we have a laser in our practice. And also we have another um, technology called the gentle wave, which is like a power wash for the tooth. It actually uses sound waves to pump the disinfection solution through the tooth to really get into all the nooks and crannies. So if you really want that modern day elevated root canal experience, you're going to focus on a provider that has these pieces of technology. Because the the truth is your chance of needing to have to redo that is probably going to decrease significantly because quite frankly, I love using this tech because it's like cheating almost. Like my job becomes easy and it's better for the patient. The outcome is so amazing. And in the end, the patients have less post-operative pain. So it's really a win-win, but I think it's important for the patient to understand the value of the technology instead of just looking at the, you know, the price tag of something, because there is a lot of value that comes with it. That is really cool. And that really kind of speaks to what you were talking about earlier about how the technology has really changed and evolved. So, and, and really truthfully, like, I don't, I I don't know of any endodontists, but I haven't looked into, I haven't looked it up. Are there, are there endodontists in a lot of cities? Is this like, how prevalent is your field? So there's about, I think around 5,000 of us period. 
Um, and then Charlotte, just since you know the area, there's about 20, 25 of us okay. in, in Charlotte. So if that gives you a range, but there are some areas that don't have a specialist. Right. You know, so they have to travel a few hours just to get care. So that's why it's important for general dentists to actually know how to do this procedure and know how to do it well so that everyone has the freedom to be served. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's a real field. It's a real specialty and we are usually everywhere. If you know, to look for us. <laughs> yeah. And well, and that's the thing. I mean, I, I am glad that we're having this conversation because I wasn't even aware, you know, and I, and I'm always looking for people that are looking at the body from a holistic perspective and looking for ways to help the body heal. Um, and I've even had family members that, you know, have been faced with the decision of a root canal and they're like, well, what do you think? And what should I do? And, and it's always like in those moments that I'm just like, oh man, I should have been looking into, I should have known about this. Cause now I feel like I'm like to the wire, you know, it's not like we, we have two months to think about it and go right. look around for people. So this might be something for somebody, if you're listening to just, you know, do a search in your area and see if you find somebody that's close by, because you really never know, like the, like the timing, just, it may be something that pops up. And it's like, at that point, you've got to be able to advocate for your health and make the best decisions possible, but you may be doing it in real time and you may not have, you know, days or weeks to be able to, to, to find a solution. Um, and I love great your, point. yeah, That's a great point. You should just have them on speed dial before you even meet them. Right. hundred <laughs> percent. I, I'm telling you, I have really started to appreciate the value of having like a, a Rolodex. I mean, that's like an old <laughs> reference, I guess, but like having my people that are just in the arsenal of, okay, if I have a, a pediatric child problem that's related to, you know, whatever that I know who to go to, because there's nothing worse, especially as a parent feeling like, Oh, we have a problem and I don't know where to go or who to ask. And and then the default is you're either end up in an emergency room or it the pediatrician's office, but likely the problem they're having is is something that you know a, a specialist needs to be able to see and then you just get referred out at that point and you're not shopping around. You're not doing the legwork. Like you're just okay, well, I got this referral. And so I, this is, this is where we are and you're tackling problems and you don't feel equipped and you don't feel like you've got enough pieces or knowledge and understanding to make the best decision for whoever it is you're advocating for. Maybe it's even yourself. Yeah. It's funny you say that because that's exactly what happened to me when I was 17 years old. I had a toothache. I had a massive toothache and I'm 17. So I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Right. And my mom, who's a physician, she's an anesthesiologist. She had no idea what to do because her being a medical provider and not a dental provider, she didn't know what to do. And so my dentist sent me to the oral surgeon to get my tooth out at the age of 17. And he removed my tooth. And once the anesthesia were up, I still had my toothache. It was the wrong tooth. And that's pretty much why I'm an endodontist. And so then after that, then I was referred to the endodontist. So even I had no idea an endodontist existed until after my own tooth story. And so I'm pretty sensitive to this topic <laughs> because I've lived it. And I think it's really important that people know that, that we exist. Wow. There's always a personal story. There's always, <laughs> there's always something that brings you into, because this is a highly like niche specialized area that you're in. And so that's, that is, that's unbelievable. So then after that, after you saw your endodontist, you were able to relieve the pain by addressing the right, the right thing. Correct. And he was amazing. He, I loved how he educated me through the whole process. And he, cause it was like a nine month ordeal where we didn't know what the problem was. We didn't know if it was even coming from a tooth. I just had this pain up here and I mean, I, I was told that my pain was all in my head and he kind of brought me back. He was like, no, you're fine. Like this is, you were smart and listening to your body and your body was trying to tell you something and you just, it just got confused and he walked me through the whole thing. And that made such an impact on me and um, I, it never left me. 
Yeah. And it's, I mean, and that's what you're walking with other people through now too, I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure you do that every day. That's really cool. Well, people want to know more, you know, what is it, what, you know, you're, you're on a lot of platforms, you speak out, you know, not only are you actually in practice and you're doing this, you know, you're, you're speaking to people all the time and, you know, you're really carrying this message and you're a big proponent for the work that you do and, and really your why behind it. So is there anything that you'd like to leave our audience with that, um, really encapsulates like your work or, it could even just be something that's an encouragement to them. Cause I think we have a number of people, we live in a time where people are juggling so many things that are heavy. There's so many things that are hard, um, maybe just perspective or wisdom that you could share from your experience as, as a doctor in this field. Yeah. I thought that, you know, just working in my practice was what I was going to do for the rest of my life. And then when I started to see my own tooth story showing up, all the time, I realized that my heart was really into teaching other dentists how to do it better and how to really serve their patients. And so I started teaching and that's been my, my really, my, my passion, not just treating my patients and serving my patients, but how can I help more patients by teaching other dent, other dentists, how to do root canals better. And I went with my heart. I went with my gut and I'm, I'm so happy that I did. Yeah, that's so cool. I and I think that that's so beautiful too because the impact of that is amplified. Like it's just it's you you could treat one person at a time and that's that serves a great purpose, but you have exponential impact, kind of a ripple effect impact when you can start to share what it is that you know, and you know that the body's capable of with other doctors that then can spend the time. Because I thought, I mean, I am like blown away at the the kind of statistic earlier about the the training and just how, you know, r- the root canal procedure itself is there, you know, you're only doing it four or five times, you know, and until you're out there in the wild doing it. And so, I mean, it's just, there's, there seems to be, you know, so much that can be learned from that, or maybe people just need to say, Hey, if it's comes down to a root canal, I need to see an endodontist. I need to see somebody that just does that specifically. Um, and realize that my dentist may be really good at certain things, but that's not their wheelhouse. And if you, you really, I mean, that I do that in functional medicine, like that is, I I don't know everything about everything at all, but I do know the few people that are really good at Lyme or they're really good at, you know, whatever type of infection. And I'm like, that's all they do. So I know that they, they are the most experienced in it. And that's where I want to go. And that's kind of plays back into the idea of, you know, having your people. And so listening to this podcast is a great way to get you exposed to practitioners and experts so that you have a resource to tap into should the time come that you need some support or you need a second opinion, because there's nothing worse than being uninformed and being your back against the wall and having to make a medical decision and feeling like you just don't have the resources to do it, you know, in a way that makes you feel confident. Exactly. And there's, there's always, you know, hopefully, I feel like I'm like a great resource for people. If you can't come see me in Charlotte, I also have so many endo friends around the country. So there's always someone who can connect you with someone who can help support you, right? So good. You guys have, do you have like a little endo family <laughs> it's like we do it's, we do it's so great i imagine it probably is because it's it's so small i'm like you've got to kind of know like the who's who in the space yeah. so. and we all know each other and we meet once a year you know at our that's so meeting. fun and it's fun it's fun when we get to talk shop right <laughs> i know you just get to nerd out on all the things you love <laughs> yep <laughs> that's amazing well since we've kind of landed here, I feel like this is a great way for you to kind of wrap us up and just let us know where people can find you. So if they want to go online or maybe they're in Charlotte, how do they get in touch with your practice? How can they connect with some of you know your resources or TEDx talks, whatever it is, you know, let us know where we can get more information about you and even the endodontist space in general. Yeah. So I um I have an, a website called Sonia Chopra DDS. That's Sonia with an I. And there's lots of great resources there. Um, It was 
initially intended to be mainly for dentists, but I've had so many patients reach out and they find this, the resources helpful that now I'm going to start making patient resources as well. So that's where you can find a lot of good, juicy, free stuff. Um, I also probably hang out the most uh, at, on Instagram and that's at Sonia Chopra DDS again with an I. And, um, you know, if you are having an issue and you want to come see me in Charlotte, North Carolina, my practice is called Ballantine Endodontics. That's Valentine with a B and i um, happy to treat you there. If you feel like you're too far across the country and you need help, I do have um, a resources page of some of my trusted friends that are ended on a sprinkled around the country. So you can also find that at soniachoprodds.com. Amazing. Amazing. I, well, it's so cool that you were like right in my backyard for years and years and years. And I know so many people in the Charlotte area. So I know who to send them to now uh, for their root canal expert. But um, thank you so much for joining us, guys. We're going to link everything in the in the show notes for you. So everything she just said, just hit the show notes up. Um, and her Instagram, really, you've got great content and you've got great interviews. So go check her out on Instagram. If you love this episode, make sure you like it, share it. We love hearing from you. I love hearing from you as your host. I know Dr. Motley's not here. So kind of feel like there's a little gap. Normally, Dr. Motley's here co- co-hosting with me, but um, wasn't able to be here, but you know, the ladies held down the house today. So it's, it's been fun. And, um, and it's just been a joy to have you with us. Thank you so much. All right, guys, we will see you on the next episode. Thanks for hanging out once again, and we'll see you on the next one.